Hey guys, welcome. It is Traeger Kitchen Live. It is the December edition. Merry Christmas, everybody, from all of us here at Traeger Grills. My name is Danielle Bennett, also known as DivaQ. You're hanging out with me for the next hour. We are here in my backyard in Central Florida, and I'm telling you, it is such a delicious menu for tonight. So I've got a cocktail. We'll talk about this later. Got a little bit of whiskey going on in there. We've got some Hasselback potato, or sorry, Hasselback uh, apples tonight crumbly goodness better than any apple pie we've got of course the incredible smoked peppered tenderloin tonight yeah big gorgeous beef tenderloin and we've got one of my favorite casseroles to do which is a squash au gratin cheesy goodness and you know what we're going to do it all in the next hour so welcome to my backyard merry christmas uh joya noel and uh glad you guys are all with us i honestly thought it was still august i don't know where the summer went but we're just a few weeks out from christmas and of course we've got to go over some holiday favorites now tonight i'm using two grills and they're right behind me i've got the pro and i've got the timberline and i'll be using both of those tonight now one of the things is is that i've actually got a mixture of cherry and hickory in there tonight so that's my all natural wood pellet choice for this evening and tonight i'm going to be using a whole bunch of tools and we'll talk about them as we go so i'm so glad you guys are all with us we're gonna get right into it and start right off with dessert because you know what life's short you gotta eat dessert first so this is a really interesting technique that i love hassleback is just a technique for cutting through like you know a variety of items whether they're potatoes potatoes, fruits, whatnot. And basically what you're kind of doing is like opening them up and kind of fanning them out. And it's to get all this goodness in there. And you know, we're using apples tonight, but you could actually use a whole bunch of other fruits. This is really good with plums. It's awesome with pears. So of course, make it your own, you know, do it up like you like it. Cause remember you're at my house right now, but of course at your house, you may want to change it up just a little bit. So we've got a cutting board here. I've got a half an apple. It's been peeled. Remember everybody, every single recipe that we're covering tonight and so much more is available at TraegerGrills.com. Remember that recipe section is the bomb. We have, I mean, it's ridiculous how many <laughs> recipes are there now. And of course, we've got expert pit masters and culinary experts, J-Rob, we've got Amanda Haas, we've got Meat Church, Whiskey Bent. Um, we have so many incredible people there. Remember to check out all that great content there. Take a look at all the wonderful videos, share your favorites, and remember to always, you know, hashtag Traeger Grills, uh, Traeger Hood, you know, get it out there on social media and share your Traeger goodness this season, of course. So once again, we're starting back with the apples. I've already peeled these. I've actually cored them out, as you can see. I do a lot of things with apples. It's a great time of the year to do apples. Um, I've got some prepped already on a quarter pan right now. We're going to run these at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I've got the Pro going at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the Timberline tonight going at a much lower temperature. And we're going to get back right into it. So apples have been peeled. Um, now in order to prep for tonight, here's a tip for the holiday season. You don't have to rush around and do this all last second. You can actually get all of your apples peeled and all you have to do is hold them in your fridge, you know, for a couple of hours or even overnight, just hold them in water with a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. And that's why they still look like apples and not brown covered up things. So here's a tip. I've got a cutting board here. I've got a brush. I've got a sharp knife. We're going to get into some deliciousness to actually coat these apples with. So I've got some melted butter. I've got some brown sugar and I've got a little bit of cinnamon. So all you want to do is you want to take the brown sugar, mix it into that melted butter. Now here in Florida, that's not that hard, honestly. Get that all melted in there and it's going to create like a thick slurry. Now, once we get all the apples cut and onto the tray, we're actually going to be coating them with this. So that's the brown sugar and that delicious buttery goodness. And this is a very generous amount of cinnamon. You could also use a little bit of nutmeg in there if you like that, uh, a touch of cloves. So as you can see, it's a fairly thick slurry. And uh, one of the things I would recommend because this is a sugar and butter mixture, uh, when it comes to prepping these apples, if you're using a little sheet pan like this, make sure you cover it with either one of these like silicone mats. You can buy them all over the place. I've got a, you know, a recommended buy list on my, in my Instagram. Um, or you can put actually a piece of parchment paper in there. You want to make sure that you have something that, you know, you can release the apples off of because once that sugar gets caramelized, it gets a little sticky and we want to add all that wood fire goodness into the apples. So our slurry is ready. We've got the other apples ready to go on the tray. And here is my tips for Hasselback ease of goodness. You know what these are? 
These are chopsticks. I actually carry these in my, <laughs> my travel bag at all times because I have great nails and I'm not messing them up. So I always travel with chopsticks. They happen to also be Traeger orange, but these beautiful uh, plastic chopsticks are great for a lot of things, not just eating, you know, snacks on the plane. One of the things I love to do is actually you take the chopsticks or if you've got skewers, use those. You can even use like a couple of wooden spoons if you've got the handles of spoons. But if you lay it down on each side of that apple, it kind of like gives you a guide so you don't go all the way through the apple, okay? So then all you do is you're gonna hold it nice and tight. And now, because the chopstick is on either side, you won't go all the way through the apple, okay? So it's gonna take it down, you know, like about quarter inch before it ends. Pretty simple, kind of like it. And now we've got that fanning going on. And that's really important because we want all that goodness to get inside there. Now I've got the other ones already ready. Chopsticks, good to go. And now it's time to slather this on. Beautiful goodness, buttery goodness. And what you wanna do is you wanna, when you slather it on, slather it on every single apple that's here. And remember, one of the cool things is, is with the Traeger recipes, you guys know that you can slide that servings size on. So if you wanna do it for four people, you know, eight people, whatever, just adjust it accordingly. And then you're gonna get all that buttery, brown sugar, cinnamony goodness into those apples. And it's gonna start to melt in between all of those little cuts. And that's one of the benefits of doing this. Now, here's one of the benefits of doing individual apples. You know, for the holiday season, it's kind of like, you know, a little more bougie. It's lovely and it makes things delicious. So one of the great things about doing it like this, it's so much easier than doing a pie. Do you guys see how quick that was? Super easy, super awesome. And now we can go to the grill. Now, 400 degrees is where we are going. But before you do, here's a tip. We wanna get these apples nice and soft. So I've got a piece of, you know, just a little piece of foil here. We're gonna cover these apples up to start. Not to finish, just to start. Cause we're gonna get them steamed out a bit and get them nice and soft and juicy and delicious. And we're gonna go to the grill about 20 to 30 minutes. Now here's the deal everybody. It really depends on your apples. Some apples are really, you know, a lot tighter than others. You know, they're a little bit harder, all those things. And of course, depending on the size of your apples. I bought apples a couple weeks ago. They were literally the size of like half a football. They were so big. So all you have to do after about 20 to 30 minutes, here's a tip for you. Grab a fork. The apples need to be fork tender. That's it. Pretty simple. If they're not tender, put them on for another 10 minutes. Not a big deal. 400 degrees is where we're going at. And like I said, we're going to go and we're going to put these onto the timber line right behind me. Just for now. Just because, you know what, I'm going live tonight. So 400 degrees on the pro, but because we're live, I'm putting them on the timber line right now. Now, before we go on to the next item, I'm going to prep something up. And this is going to be the delicious topping for these apples. So I have some oats, a little bit of flour, brown sugar again, and some more cinnamon because we are gonna make this crumbly little topping. So after about 20, 30 minutes, we're actually gonna be removing that foil cover from those apples. We're gonna be coating it with this topping and then we're gonna make sure we get it all deliciously melted in there. So softened butter, of course, once again, unsalted. Squish it all down, okay? Add the brown sugar. Mix that all up, pretty simple. And I'm using light brown sugar. It's your house. If you want to use dark brown sugar, you can. Um, I just find that light brown sugar gets it dark enough and crumbly enough. I got a little bit of flour going in there. Get all those out of the way. And uh, you know, here's a tip for you. One sec. One other thing I like to add in. A tiny pinch of salt. Trust me on this. Salt makes just about everything better. So we've got some flour. We've got some sugar, we've got some buttery goodness, and now we're gonna get the oats in there, and those oats are gonna give it a lot of texture, a lot of deliciousness, because honestly, this to me is a great way to give individual portions of this incredible apple dessert that, I don't know, it just seems amazing. Now, apples, oats, delicious goodness. It's like all of those traditional, you know, crumble top flavors. And by the way, when this is on your grill, it is totally spectacular. It smells fantastic in your backyard. Sprinkling on the cinnamon now. 
and don't forget that little pinch of salt. Once again, all of the deliciousness is available on TraegerGrills.com. Now, while I'm mixing this up, I gotta tell you guys, you know, Christmas is coming. Like, look, I'm a present in itself. And, you know, with Christmas coming, y'all might wanna check out TraegerGrills.com and check out a dealer locator near you. Also, if you're looking for some great gifts, you know we've got the brand new provisions, right? Yeah, the new provisions thing is just wickedly cool. So basically, the kit comes to your house and it's like barbecue nirvana comes to your house and all you have to do is follow the steps. So there's brisket, there is uh, ribs, there's a whole bunch of different varieties. You pick your proteins, you pick your sides, and it's all epic goodness. So seriously, if you got a griller in your family, um, you know, for the holiday season, you may want to consider that for an epic, awesome gift. All right, everybody. So our crumble's ready. So we're going to come back to that in about 20, 30 minutes. We're going to set this all aside. And now we are going to get to the big one. Yeah, the main protein for tonight is something deliciously epic. Helping me tonight. Thanks, Bri. Appreciate it. See, mag magically you just click, pass it off. Things disappear. In the meantime, I get to drink. All right. So, oh my good God. So, how's that for a bad boy? This is a whole untrimmed beef tenderloin. And this one is a monster. And now here's the key. Beef tenderloin is extraordinarily pricey. This is an absolute delicious holiday meal item, okay? So, a lot of people get really intimidated on what to do with it. So I'm gonna take you through all the steps tonight on how to trim out this beef tenderloin, how to make it epic, and we're gonna talk about all the little things that you can do with all those parts as well. So I've got a disposable cutting board. The tenderloin has come out of the cryovac. I've patted it dry with paper towels. I have got a super sharp, incredibly awesome bony knife, one of my favorite tools. We're gonna to grab a pair of gloves, and then we're gonna to get to trimming this. Now, at the store, you can buy a whole beef tenderloin. Um, or you can buy them already trimmed. I always prefer to buy them like this. And we're going to take you through all of the parts of a beef tenderloin. I think it is epic. Now, oh my gosh, this one really is a monster. Okay, so different parts of this um, beef tenderloin. This section over here, you can see there's little humps here all the way through. That's actually called the chain. And if you actually pull on it, the chain will come right off of the center section um, of the beef tenderloin. So all you have to do, uh, get a few muscles. Good thing I've been working out with those arm muscles and pull that right off. That's called the chain. It's absolutely delicious, but it does take quite a bit of work to trim all of that out, okay? So that's the chain. We'll put that to the side. Then, now that we're back to this section, you have a secondary roast here towards the end. You'll notice it comes out quite a bit at one of the ends. So because it comes out so much, what you wanna do is you wanna take your knife, okay? And you just wanna follow that fat line right there. That actually can become an entire individual roast. All you have to do is trim it out. Perfect, get all that silver skin off there. And silver skin is that really thin kind of membrane that's on the back of ribs, it's on some of the steak cuts, some roasts, and it looks like this. And this one has a lot of it. So the first thing I like to do when I'm trying to get off all this silver skin is literally I'll take my fingers right underneath it and I'll start pulling off these sections. And you can see we have all of that delicious meat. Now, why is it important to get that off? Well, for me, it's all about penetration of all the delicious flavors we're gonna be adding into this, okay? So this is a tenderloin tip down here. You can see that it actually narrows out into quite a point. Then we've got the rest of the body of this. Now, depending on what you know, beef magazine you're looking at or article online, this is sometimes referred to as the Chateaubriand. Sometimes it is referred to as the filet mignon. Basically, the whole thing is a beef tenderloin, though, and that's the important thing. My friends at Texas A&M, shout out to everybody there. Hey, guys. Um, you know, we had a whole conversation one day about what it takes to call all those things. And one of the things is, is sometimes those meat terms aren't really official. They just kind of get adapted. So we're going to continue on, and we're going to take our very sharp bony knife, and we're going to trim off all this excess fat. And all this excess fat and this extra little piece at the end 
over to the side. Now, as you can see, this is now becoming a lot more familiar looking now, right? We've gotten rid of that big hump of chain meat that has all of that excess fat in there. We've taken off that one big section at the end there. That's a big like roast. Now we've left with all of this. We've got some fat on the bottom. We have got all that silver skin on the top. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to actually trim off the two pointed ends. And let me explain why. When you're trimming meat and it's going to the grill, consistency of thickness can really make a big difference. See, if you start off with a roast that's, you know, three, four inches all the way across, it's gonna cook much more evenly. It's gonna have moisture much more evenly distributed. So for me, just makes sense. Make sure your meat is as thick from one end to the other, wherever possible. So what I like to do, I'm gonna take a nice cut there. Tenderloin roast. You can actually cut this up into tenderloin tips, throw them on the grill. You can make shish kebabs out of this. You can do a lot of things. You can actually take a cut, flatten it out, grill it up quick and fast. Lots of great options. We're gonna to come to this end over here. Same thing, tenderloin tip. As you can see, beautifully marbled. We've got lots of little white flecks in there. And when you're looking for meat, that's what you wanna see. Those little flecks of fat are literally just great pockets of goodness, flavor bombs that are gonna make your meat taste better all the time. So not only do you get wood-fired goodness from your Traeger grill, you get delicious goodness from all of that fat melting into your meat. All right, so now we're into a much more manageable size, okay? Now this here still needs some work. So we're gonna trim off the rest of that silver skin. Now you'll notice that the silver skin usually has a thin fat layer right on top. So what I like to do once again, take your finger, pop it on the top, split it off wherever possible. So if you can pull it off with your hand, you may as well do that. Remember, we're not trying to gouge this out. It's really important. We pay big bucks for this. And let's talk about that for a second. If you are in a family of people that eat well done meat, this is not the cut for them. Honestly, this is such a, in a premium cut of meat that this is not what I would serve for people that like uh, well done meat. Um, for me, medium rare, medium at the very highest is what I would serve this. So as you can see, much cleaner now. And now we just have to deal with that one section over there that is the silver skin. Once again, really important when you're trimming silver skin and doing you know trim work on such an expensive piece of meat, one of the key things is don't gouge your meat. So here is our silver skin right on the top. And you can see it's not very much. While, while we've pulled off all those other little bits, now we've left ourselves just this one little section of silver skin. Take the tip of your knife. And remember, a sharp knife is a good knife. And you wanna just run it right underneath there. And we wanna take paper thin cuts, okay? you know, really super, super thin cuts off of there um, to get that silver skin off there because we don't want to waste that meat, okay? Same again, go back in again, nice and thin. Get that silver skin off there. Glide that knife over there. Uh, by the way, this is always a good idea to trim right after you get your knives sharpened. Really a good idea. A sharp knife is literally a chef's best friend. So we're just getting those little bits trimmed off. Silver skin gone there. I've got one little section of silver skin here. And that is it for that. Now, here's the thing. This section under here has got much softer fat, okay? Like, I mean, super soft fat. It's delicious and it's melty. Not all fat in beef melts the same. So the types of fat that don't melt are those hard pockets of fat, like that big hard pocket of fat on a brisket. Same thing. You always want to get rid of that type of fat. And why we do that, why we take all this time to do that is to enable the, you know, the slurry we're going to put on there, the flavorings we're going to put on there to actually get into the meat. You know, one of the key things for me is to make our meat as tasty as possible every single time. So now this roast is still, it's a little floppy. You know, nobody likes floppy meat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab some butcher's twine and we are actually going to truss that. Trussing just means we're gonna tie it up nice and fancy. So what happens then is that it stays in a nice cylinder. It doesn't get overcooked, okay? Because we're watching the temperatures. So from one end to the other, we're not gonna see a huge variance in getting overcooked, okay? Because we're gonna be looking for about 125, max 130 degrees on this gorgeous piece of meat from one end to the other. And in order to do that, we want it to stay nice and compact, nice and tight all the way through. So we're gonna go grab some butcher twine. 
Here's our butcher twine. Remember, it should be food safe. Grab some butcher twine. While you grab the butcher twine, you get to take a drink. By the way, make sure you check out TraegerGrills.com. Not only for, you know, food stuff, you need to check out the cocktail section. I'm telling you, Traeger Smoke Simple Syrup, a little bit of hard cider, maybe a little more than normal amount of uh, whiskey. It's a good cocktail. Touch of lemon juice for just for acidity. So Old Orchard, uh, you know, delicious cocktail going on over there. Brian, do I have any questions while, before I start trussing? What should, uh, what should I look for when choosing a tenderloin? Oh, so the good question we just got was, what should we look for when we are purchasing a tenderloin? Well, I think for the holidays, I try to buy, uh, honestly, either CAB or CAB Prime or Prime Meat in general. Always try to go for a really good marbled piece of meat. That's really important to me always. I'm a huge fan of marbled meat, you know, Snake River Farms. We've got lots of different places to buy them online. Um, but basically for me, good quality meat from a good purveyor is really important. As much marbling as possible, all of those delicious flecks of fat is really important. Brian? Ah, question is, what's the best apples you can use for that recipe? Well, I'm going to tell you my favorite apples, um, and, and Brian's too, actually, is the Cortland apples. Uh, Honeycrisp work really well. You want a fairly firm apple um, because that actually, you know, is going to give you the texture that you want. Um, I think that that's a really good, good too. I'm not a fan of using Macintosh. They tend to fall apart. So whenever you're going and purchasing your apples for the dessert, like, Feel up your apples, people, okay? Make sure that they're nice and firm, okay? Firm apples are good apples. All right, so I have literally just put a knot in the end there. And so we're gonna trust this. So I've got the presentation side is going down on the cutting board. I just noticed a piece of fat here. I'm just gonna cut that off, get rid of it. A little bit of a blood blister in there. If you see anything like that, you know, don't hesitate to go in and just do a little cut just to get rid of it. We're gonna put the presentation side down. So the bottom of the roast is now facing up towards me. Now, I literally just tied the end there. So what you do is you just take the string, your butcher twine, go under. I'm gonna give it about two inches there at that side. Tie it there. and you want to pull it tight. Not too tight though. Like, you know, nice and tight, but not too tight. <laughs> I hope that makes sense to everybody. So you don't want to be cutting the string into the meat. You just want it nice and firm. So there we go. You're going to do it again. Tuck it under, tuck the string under. Pretty simple. Space it out nice and evenly. Same thing, tight, but not too tight. Don't cut the string into the meat. Let's do it again. Ah, there we go. Pulling it through. Now, if you're uncomfortable with doing it like this, you can actually set out yourself five or six individual strands and just do little knots all the way. I was taught to do it like this, so this is how I do it. Once again, one more. But every two inches works just fine. It's such a lovely, lovely cut of meat. And it just looks so darn pretty when it's on the grill too, you know? I think I can get one more in at the end here. Double tie it. Gonna be delicious. And then we're gonna make a slurry for this. Bri, while I'm tying this knot, I got a question? Why not leave the pointed end on for people who like their meat well done? So the question is, why do you not leave the pointed end on for those of you who like um, well done meat? Because I don't give people that like well done meat a tenderloin. I'll go cook them a sirloin. I, I gotta be honest, that's why. Because <laughs> I wanna save those for me. <laughs> that's, my, that's my answer. That's my official answer on that, okay? Cook them a sirloin, okay? Keep the beef tenderloin for the people who like theirs, theirs rare or medium rare. Bri, one more question. Uh, what type of apples did you use tonight? Uh, the apples that I used tonight were actually uh, honey crisps. That's what I could find. All right, so as you can see now, a little bit of adjustment, all nicely trussed, fancy word for tying it up. And we're going to set that aside for a minute. Um, just a point here, I'm going to go back to that chain for a minute, everybody. The other stuff is pretty simple to take the fat off. The chain has, of course, the really hard fat section. You really do want to take that off as much as possible. 
I'm gonna give you an extra bonus tip tonight. So not only are you gonna get the tenderloin truss, and I'm gonna show you what I do with the chain. Um, one of the things is, is that the chain to me, this is one of my favorite cuts of meat. So I'm just gonna quickly cut off all that hard fat, pop it over to the side. The reason I love this cut so much as well is because it is extraordinarily well marbled. I mean, Mac Daddy marbled and it is delicious. So we've got our chain. I'm gonna take off this excess bit here at the top. And there's a lot of fat here, internally and externally, okay? There we go. Butchering it very quickly tonight. Okay, so now that we have the majority of the big chunks of fat off there, here is the DVQ roast. Dead serious. Take your chain, once you've got it like this, okay, now that it's been trimmed off of all that hard fat, all the hard fat, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna roll it like a cinnamon roll. So I take that whole little roast and I roll it up just like that. Now, it's not gonna stay together unless you bring out this stuff again. So not only do you get this beautiful little, you know, cinnamon roll roast, um, you also get your tenderloin, and then of course you've got your tips and your other end roast that you can also tie as well if you'd like. But I really like doing this with the chain because I feel like I'm getting this beautiful little roast and it is perfect for two people or one really, really hungry football player, okay? So. I hope you guys take a look at that. That is how I treat the chain. Hands are getting slippery from all that fat. And there you go. So take a look at that cute little roast, everybody. Perfect for two people. And remember, this is a very premium cut. So we've got the chain now. We've got the two tenderloin tips. We've got that excess fat. This is the one butt roast that's towards the end. Same thing on that butt roast. You wanna take your knife trim it out. Remember the Traeger is perfect for all of these. So that little butt roast that's at the end here, trim it down. And it's a lovely little roast on its own as well. And it'll cook, cook much more um, evenly, just like that. It's a nice even thickness all the way through. So there we go everybody. And then we've got our tip. We've got our other tip over here. And then we've got some excess that we can grind. So perfect, no waste, absolutely a great way to cut up a beef tenderloin. We did it really quickly tonight, but you guys get the message. All right, so we're gonna get rid of these ones because we're not gonna do that. I get some treats this week, absolutely. So we're gonna pass that off. We're gonna talk about what we do with this gorgeous hunk of meat. First of all, get your grill going 180 degrees because not only are we going to the grill, we're gonna go to the grill and smoke it. But here is a tip, everybody. Now. When you get this slathered up, we're just about to make that slather. I've got a bowl, I've got a mustard, I got a mustard, <laughs> I've, got some, um, I've got some garlic. So this is stone ground Dijon mustard. This is a whole bunch of garlic. You're at my house, of course. What you wanna do is you wanna mix it up. Notice I still have a glove on, so I don't need to you know, dirty up a spoon. So once you get that all slathered up like that, Grab your roast, slather it. Now here is a big key. One of the things I like to do is I like to actually wrap this up with plastic wrap and I like to put it in the fridge and get it nice and chilled before it goes to the grill. Now, why do I do that? Why is that so important? Well, for me, a big part of this is the fact that of course, cold meat will hold in the smoke longer. You'll actually end up with a much more pronounced smoke flavor if you hold it in that deliciousness. That's really important to me. So to the fridge, wrapped in plastic wrap, get it all wrapped up. Now, when you get it out of the fridge, here is what I would recommend you do. If I can get this open. <laughs> I want you to season this very generously with salt and pepper, very generously. Now, if you don't like salt and pepper, you know what you can use? Traeger's Prime Rib Rub, pretty simple. It's like one of my favorite things. Traeger Prime Rib Rub for the win, always on anything beef, salt, Salt Bay, Barbecue Bay. There you go. All right, get that on there. 
Now it's prepped to go to the grill. Make sure you put it in the, you know, the fridge, chill it out, get it to the grill, 180 degrees. But before you go to the grill, make sure you do one more thing. Here is one of the recommended things that I've got for your Christmas. This is the meter probe. One of the great things is it's an app based, incredible therm therm <laughs> thermometer. I can barely speak that out. So you wanna dial in the temperature. So one of the great things is, is that when you're measuring any roast and how far down you need to go, take your thermometer, whatever type it is, uh, this is the meter, come along the side because you really wanna measure about halfway down. So then all I do is I take my thumb and know that I have to go in till it hits the top of my thumb. Pretty simple, right? Little tip. Goes to the grill and we're gonna pull it off about 190, anywhere between 90 and 100 degrees. And then we're gonna sear it off at 400 degrees. Brian, I'm gonna get cleaned up. Uh, the tenderloin was from a local purveyor here in central Florida. So, next question, Brian. We're gonna get cleaned up, everybody. <laughs> what you got, Brian? All right, temperatures to start the grill at is 180 degrees, and it really does depend, you know, with any meat recipe on the grill. One of the things is, is that you always want to check the temperature. Don't necessarily go by a recipe set time, because here's the thing, that tenderloin was a lot bigger than the one I cooked earlier today. Um, a lot bigger. So, you know, some recipes will say cook it for 45 minutes, some recipes will say, you know, cook it for 30 minutes. I would start checking it about the 30 to 35 minute mark until your phone on the app from the meter reads the fact that it's reached that temperature. That's really important, okay? Now, once that happens, you wanna go back and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Brian, we're good? Yeah. All right, we're all caught up. All right, everybody, we're gonna go and we are going to move on to one of the easiest side dishes. All right, everybody, I have a dish here that has been buttered up buttered dish now this is yeah this is my pie pan i don't care it's pretty it's festive and it's red perfect for the holiday season i've got some chives and here's what i've got here already cubed up now this is squash au gratin now it comprises a couple different types of squash it comprises some white potatoes and one of the things is is that this is such a versatile recipe because what if you don't like squash? You know what? You can swap in sweet potatoes. What if you like carrots? You know what? Throw a couple carrots in there. What if you like parsnips or celerac or any of those kind of hard root vegetables? They all work in this recipe so well. I'm telling you, they are the bomb. They really work fantastic. But here's the key. Notice the size of my potatoes and the size of my squash cubes. They're about even. So you don't want something that's really tiny going against you know, something that's really big because you want them to cook in about the same time. So casserole dish, generously buttered. We have got our cut up cubes of goodness. I've got some chives because I like chives. And here is the bechamel sauce. Now, I've already made this up because it takes uh, a bit of a chunk of time, okay? So bechamel sauce. In this, I've got some heavy cream. I've got some shredded gruyere. And I've got some salt, some pepper. A whole bunch of goodness. What if you don't like Gruyere? Well, you know what? It's your house. You should probably make what you like. You know, pop in some mozzarella. Pop in some Swiss, you know, like some other types of Swiss. Uh, pop in some smoked Gouda. You literally can do any of those things with this recipe. It is that easy. We actually taught this recipe on the Traeger, you know, shop class tour. I don't know how many times. And I actually never got sick of it. I never got bored of it. I still make it for my family now. So see how easy that was? Pop that in your pan. There we go. Nice and delicious. Now here's a tip from me to you. Add more cheese. You can really never have enough cheese. Like ever, like ever, ever, okay? So cheese and chives. Those are two things I like to add right before it goes to the grill. Now here's the thing, 350, 400 degrees until it's bubbling and fork tender. Um, usually for me, that is close to about 45 minutes to an hour and 15, and it really does depend on, you know, how, once again, dense the, you know, squashes are. And, you know, if there's a lot of moisture in them, if they're really dry. So pretty simple. Bechamel, squash, potatoes, salt, pepper, heavy cream, butter, whole bunch of cheese, some dried chives. We're gonna throw it on the grill. That's it. Super simple. 
All right. Now, while I do that, I'm going to grab something else. Get rid of this. And Brian, what else do we got for questions? Do you cover the ends of the roast? So, yeah, that's a great question. Question I just got is, do I cover the ends of my roast? No, I don't, actually, because people at my house fight over the end cuts, always. So I don't cover them up, not at all. That's doing good. Now, I'm just going to go back to our beautiful apples right now. These are the ones I prepped earlier, put them on a pretty tray so they look all gorgeous. And now we're going back to that original crumble. And we're going to put a little bit of this crumble on each piece. So these are my prepped apples. As you can see, they're all fork tender. Look at how pretty they are, everybody. And you can literally just fan them out. And the reason I like fanning them out a little bit at this point is that all of that deliciousness from the crumble will actually get in between the edges. You know, all those lovely little Hasselback cuts will then, you know, get all that goodness in there. The brown sugar will get in there. The butter will get in there. All of that yumminess. So we're going to go back to the grill with this now. 400 degrees. So this one's going on the pro now. And we're going to go back to the grill for about 20, 30 minutes, right until we're just about done tonight. And we're going to serve this up. Are you ready for this? Salted caramel sauce. And of course, a little bit of ice cream. It is the holidays, everybody. All right. Now, pretty simple. Apples are going great. Squash is going great. So what else do we got to do? Well, you know what? We're going to check on that tenderloin. We've got that beautiful piece of meat. We've got it smoked. So let me show you what it looks like when it's smoked. And then I get to show you one that's actually finished. Because you know what? It's a good thing to be me. Trust me. At this point, it's a really good thing to be me because I got all this beef tenderloin kicking around my house. It's awesome. All right. So this is what the tenderloin looks like after it's been smoked. Notice my meter probe is in there. It's sitting right around 100 degrees at this point. And at this point, we're going to remove it from that grill, the low and slow grill, and we're going to go over to the hot grill, the 400 degree grill. Now, our finished temperature, because right now this is sitting right about 100 degrees, I want this to literally get to between 125 to 130 degrees. And for me, that is perfect. Now, on top of that timing, you have to remember that it is so important to let your meat rest. That rest time is like, you know, giving the meat time to redistribute all of those delicious juices, all of that goodness everywhere, all through all the meat cells, and it gets you the best finished, you know, finished texture of all time. So this one here now, nicely smoked. Look at that gorgeous color. Mm, smells so good. We're going to the hot grill with this. So over onto that side. Now in the meantime, I've got to show you something. I want to show you a completely finished squash. This is for me, one of the most delicious side dishes. We just prepped it. You know, I've had to do one ahead of time for, the, for our beautiful TKL tonight. This side dish is so delicious. Remember, you can get, you know, assemble all the components the day before. You can get it all ready for your grill, pop it on the grill. And the best part is, is that once you get it done, did you know it can hang out for like an hour? It's amazing. So here we go. Once again, a little hot, this one. Look at that goodness. Cheesy, potatoey, squash goodness. Like that's what it is completely. So we have this beautiful squash. I'm just gonna have the, sp the serving spoon. I'm not gonna dig into this yet. I'm gonna give it five more minutes. Um, that grill has been going a little low tonight because we don't want this to overcook. But just like with the meat, funny enough that when you have an au gratin, if you let that au gratin rest, all the cheese, of course, as it's cooling is going to tighten it up. It's not going to be as liquidy. So it's really important to, you know, give the au gratin some time as well. Now, once again, just want to touch on this beautiful cocktail I made tonight. This is once again onto the recipes at TraegerGrills.com. We have so many amazing recipes, everybody. And remember, tis the season for goodness, wood fire goodness. So whiskey, a little bit of lemon, a hard cider of your choice. And I've got some grilled apples because it's festive and it's delicious. And I had these little cinnamon sticks, so I thought that looked really great. Whiskey of choice tonight for me is Whistle Pig 10 Year, my personal choice. So cheers, everybody. 
All right, let's show them that finished gorgeous roast. I'm gonna grab, Brian, you wanna grab that roast? It's right there. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna grab the cutting board now. One second here. Here we go, everybody. We'll grab the pretty cutting board now. Thanks, sir. I'm gonna put it right there. Now this has been resting for about 20 minutes. We're still gonna let this rest just a little bit. We're gonna put that over to the side. So we've got our au gratin. We have our gorgeous beef. Brian, it's time for some more questions. Great question. So the question I had tonight was what type of potatoes did I use? I used a standard white russet potato. Um, you can of course use whatever your favorite is, but that to me just works really well in this recipe. Um, I think it's, it's just a great thing. Although I have seen a couple of my friends make the recipe with those tiny little jeweled potatoes and they've actually cut them in half because some of them are a little bit larger than their squash bites. And if you're like really running short of time, buy the squash that's already cut up. Because let me tell you, that acorn squash is really hard to peel. Um, my preference will always go to but butternut because, well, you're at my house right now. So make sure you do what you like at your house. Question, Brian? Uh, can you pull back the pointed end point before you trust to have consistent thickness? Ah, great, great idea. So a question was, can you fold under the pointed end so you can have a consistent thickness? Yes, you can. But here's what happens sometimes. When you fold over the pointed ends, and I mean, I've done it myself. Sometimes, you know, the barbecue rub or the salt and pepper or whatever slather you're putting on there, it kind of gets kind of gummy in between the sections that are folded over. So I much prefer to actually use the roast as is. As you can see, we've got beautiful color all the way through. And that consistent bark on the outside means that I don't have any gummy bits on this. Like, you know, it's kind of like it didn't quite get barked up because it's too much moisture in the folded over parts. And anytime you have two pieces of meat that touch each other on the grill, what happens is, is actually they don't get bark on them. They tend to steam. So my preference is always to go with this type of cut versus the folded over section. Keep those points for another application and utilize them to their full capacity. Brian? What do you do if you don't have Great question. What do you do if you don't have the two grills? Well, here is what I would do. I would actually start literally my squash and get the squash done. I'd get my apples done well in advance as well. Get your squash done, get your apples done, put them to the side and they will keep really well. Okay. Then move on to doing your tenderloin. The meat should always be the focus as far as I'm concerned, because this is where you spend the most money, right? So this can hold for over an hour, no problem. The apples, once they're warmed up and they get nicely fanned out, you can actually finish that crumble in just the last 15 to 20 minutes when you're actually searing off the beef. So this whole recipe can come together really quickly, even just with one grill. But remember, more grills are always better. All right, everybody, I've got a pretty platter here. Traeger ornament, of course. Uh, I've got some rosemary and cranberries, none of which are in my recipe tonight, but it's Christmas and it looks festive, so that's how I roll. I'm going to slice this up um, now that it's rested, and then we're gonna pull out the apples last minute, because we're gonna be putting some ice cream and some salted caramel on there. So let's slice it in this beautiful roast, see how it looks, how delicious it is. Remember, we did it low and slow, 180 degrees, till it got to about 90 to 100 degrees. Then we moved it from the low and slow grill, we put it over onto a hot grill. And remember, you can, of course, always just utilize one grill. But remember, maybe you made it onto the nice list. Maybe Santa's going to bring you another grill. Maybe people that love you bring you another grill. I'm just saying. I hope you all made it on the nice list. It's been a rough year for some of us. So, gloves. All right. Sharp knife. Meter out. And remember, if you're using all of these lovely little, you know, probes, you all need to get some of these. These are probe wipes. Keep it clean, keep it sanitized, people. Keep it clean, keep it sanitized. So make sure you're wiping them off properly, uh, taking care of all your tools so you have no cross-contamination issues. Remember, you should always have lots of tongs. Take a look at all the accessories. Remember, we've got tons of accessories at TraegerGrills.com. Christmas is coming, people. Smoke simple syrup, cocktails, great gifts coming up. And of course, we've got merchandise, you know, hoodies, we've got rubs, we've got grills provision boxes, you know, the list goes on and on. And it's been confirmed, Santa loves barbecue and grilling. So get on the program, everybody. All right, squash to the side, gorgeous roast going on. I'm gonna turn it over, I'm gonna cut off some string, which is very convenient. Super sharp knife, basic chef's knife. I think I got all the string. Don't feed people string, okay, everybody? 
Nobody wants to be eaten string. I'll tell you right now. I don't want to be eaten string. You shouldn't want to eat the string. And as you can see, when you take the string off, the meat all stays nice and consistent in its shape. And I think that's really important, right? It didn't flop apart, it didn't split. So I think that's really worth the time to do that. Super simple. All right. Oh, it's nice and rare. Get some beautiful cuts in this. And conveniently, you know, I'm just saying, if you don't want to do thin slices, you can use your string indentations as guides, you know, for where you want to cut. But let me show you what a perfectly cooked slice of beautiful beef tenderloin, peppered beef tenderloin looks like. Now notice this, it is even from one side to the other. That's what I always wanna see. I want that consistency. And by doing a reverse sear, you know, which is basically what we did, we smoked it low and slow, and then we went to a hot grill, we finished up beautifully. That's what you wanna see. You wanna see that consistency from one side to the other. This was sitting at about 100, and, I think it was 128, I think it was right around there. And of course, our ends are a little smaller. So if those people want medium done, I would recommend you give them those end cuts, okay? And then anybody who likes the rare, if there's a little bit thicker in the middle, you wanna go in and you wanna give them those pieces. But to me, this is a perfect medium rare right now. It's gorgeous. We've let it rest. Ugh. This is like beef nirvana as far as I'm concerned, everybody. And another thing I would do, um, always taste test it before it goes out because, you know, it's your house and you cooked it. And if you cook it, you should get to taste test it. So we've got the beautiful beef tenderloin. Look at how pretty it is all the way through. That's the platter, everybody. That's how I like to bring it to the table. You know, adjust accordingly for how thick or how thin the slices you want. And now let's go take a look at the apples. Brian, question? I got a question there? All right. You guys don't have any questions tonight. This must be going pretty good. Once again, if you're looking for some gifts for the holiday season, there is one more gift I would recommend for anybody who loves Traeger grills. Um, where's the gift box? It was here a second ago. One second. I got an idea for anybody who needs a gift. One minute. Woo. Apples are looking good, everybody. So, apples are looking gorgeous. This is a gift card box. I'm just saying, here's a hint, everybody. <laughs> gift cards come in all sizes and all varieties. One size really does fit, you know, fit, you know, fit everybody. So if you're looking for a last minute gift, you don't know what to get somebody, you can always try a gift card for the Christmas season. Um, so once again, our apples are lovely. They've fanned out. They look really, really pretty now. All that cinnamon and all that butter has gone on the individual sides of this and it's gone in between all those Hasselback slices. If you don't like apples for some reason, do this with pears, do this with plums. I've even done this with peaches in the summertime when they're in season. I think the peaches worked really great too. Um, and also, I would recommend, uh, you know, if you're going to use peaches, make sure you peel those as well. So, I've got a little plate here. Oh, question again. Sorry. Spoke too soon. What do you got? What, what's your favorite Traeger grill? My favorite Traeger grill. That's like picking my favorite kid. I don't have a favorite kid either. I mean, I have 19 Traegers. I don't know how to answer that. All of them. All of the above. Favorite holiday recipe? Favorite holiday recipe would be the peppered beef tenderloin. See, one of the great things is about TKL is that I get to pick and help all the recipes with Nicole, um, who is incredibly talented at Traeger's head office. And we just kind of shoot ideas back and forth. So this is actually one of my favorite recipes right here. The other thing I love is my herb crusted prime rib. That is a go-to. This is actually also one of my favorites. Um, what else? Uh, apple caramel salted galette but we have done it so many times um and i love 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 not only do i like the whiskey based cocktails i'm a huge fan of traeger's smoked eggnog it is a wicked good recipe next question do you have a short answer for this how did you get started in cooking oh my good gravy can you pass me the spatula the fish spatula um how did i get started in cooking well you know funny enough <laughs> i've been doing this for 16 years now 
16 years working on Traeger grills. I used to be an HR operations manager. Shout out to my friends up in Canada. Did that for 10 years. I got double degrees in business marketing and uh, <laughs> business marketing, yeah, and human resource operations management. I like barbecue a lot more. Um, started by judging a barbecue contest and literally just never stopped. I'm going to take two of these beautiful halves of the Hasselback. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful apples tonight. I'm going to take this really warm tray, get it out of my way. Couple things. We're bringing out some ice cream, everybody. Because, well, you're at my house and this is what I do. So this is a really good ice cream. Really good, beautiful, delicious vanilla ice cream. Ugh. And remember, the holidays are coming. So you want a really nice, generous scoop of that on there. Look at how pretty that is. Can I give this off to you before it melts because we're here in Florida? There you go. All right. And I cheated tonight. I'm going to fully admit it. This is my favorite salted caramel. <laughs> and I didn't make it from scratch tonight, okay? Sometimes you can make it from scratch. And then there's days like today where, you know what? That works. So that's the dessert for tonight, everybody. It is delicious and good. We have this beautiful, you grab me a fork, Brian. Uh, we have this beautiful, beautiful piece of apple with all of the crumbly goodness of the oats and the brown sugar and the butter. We have this beautiful, incredibly perfectly cooked beef tenderloin. We have this amazing squash au gratin. I'm going to get rid of this tray. I'm going to grab a plate and a grab a fork. How about you? There you go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Shout out to Brian. Thanks for all your help this year. Appreciate it, buddy. I've got my fork. I've got my knife. As far as I'm concerned, it's time to dig in and do some taste testing. You know, one of the things is perfectly cooked prime rib used, or uh, <laughs> beef tenderloin, prime beef tenderloin, used the meter probe, absolutely perfect, dead on. Gorgeous apples, hasselbacked to get all that goodness in there. And of course, now that it's rested, whoo, it's so good. I love this dish so much. We've got that squash au gratin and it's cheesy goodness. And I love that extra cheese on top because I think it's perfect. We've got that beautiful piece. I'll take the little piece from the back. Oh no, who am I kidding? I'm gonna eat this later on anyways, might as well do it now. But here's the thing, you're at my house? Hold on, you pass me that. Okay, I gotta be fully admitting of something. There's one more thing I would put on this prime rib or good gravy, I keep calling it prime rib. Prime beef tenderloin. Y'all can have your salt and pepper. In my house, this is actually what I serve on the table. I actually like to sprinkle this with a little bit of Traeger's prime rib rub on the beef tenderloin. Why? It's delicious and it works. So let's dig in everybody. A little bit of a bite here. Oh, it's perfectly cooked. Succulent, moist, delicious, medium rare, smoked goodness, kissed with that wood fired smoke brings everybody to the table. Forget the milkshakes. This is what's going to bring everybody to the table, everybody. We got a beautiful fork tender. Look how beautiful that little hmm, sweet squash, decadent Guerrero. For me, this is like the kind of food I crave all the time. That lovely kiss of smoke. And remember, everybody, Christmas is coming. You want to be making this stuff for your family, you know? I'm going to say cheers, and we're going to talk a couple more minutes. Give me a question while I'm swallowing. What's your oldest Traeger grill that you own? Mm. So the question is, what is my oldest Traeger grill? My oldest Traeger grill is 16 years old. It's actually still in Ontario. It is a Traeger Little Text. It has a wooden handle on it, and it's still running to this day. So that's pretty cool. It's actually the grill that I own first, and my kids have it now. Um, all of this stuff, guys, make sure you check out TraegerGrills.com for all the recipes and all that goodness. Make sure you check out our brand new provisions. Make sure you are checking out all the incredible talent at Traeger Grills. Amanda Haas is coming up this, uh, no, January 13th. Amanda Haas will be doing the next Traeger Kitchen Live. Super talented, incredible woman who has so many incredible recipes. Her cauliflower recipe, delicious. And I don't even like vegetables that much. So make sure you check her out. Also, follow TraegerGrills.com for the recipes, sign up for their, you know, updates, their newsletters. But the other thing is, is that check out all the pit masters that are there. We all have our own social media accounts. We are cooking all the time on all of these grills. 
coming up with all these holiday favorites and all this goodness. And you know what? Christmas is coming. Meter Probe would be a great idea for anybody stocking stuffer. And additionally, gift cards, of course, are always perfect in every single size. One more question, and then we're going to call it a night. I'm going to eat some more because I can. Is there a specific brand of mustard you eat, prefer to use for the tenderloin? Question was, do I have a specific brand of mustard? Actually, yeah, I do. Um, there's a couple. Kaplansky's, one of my favorite types of mustard. Um, Amazing Maple is also another one. It's a Canadian company called, from Coslix. Amazing Maple. Uh, Coslix mustard, I love it. Kaplansky's mustard, and then Golden's. Those are my top three favorite mustards. No offense to French's, I like your other stuff, but when it comes to stone ground and Dijon mustards and a little more elevated, those are kind of my favorites. So I'd really check those out. Kaplansky's for sure, Coslix, and then the Golden's stone ground Dijon. Question? Your oh, that's hard. Um, what's my favorite pellet? I don't know, depends on what I'm cooking. I use more hickory than anything else, but I love our I love our mesquite. I love our turkey blend. <laughs> Shout out to Traeger. Wish it was available year round because I love that combination. I love gourmet, I love signature. Those are kind of my favorite. The other thing I love to do for anybody who's got a pellet grill at home, you know, hopefully you have a Traeger grill at home. Here is something you can do over the holiday season. Maybe you're playing around, maybe you have a couple days off work. Take one bag of hickory, mix it with a little bit of oak and a little bit of cherry one half so 50 percent hickory 25 percent oak 25 percent cherry that's one of my favorite combos um we have those you know those pellet buckets they work great um they're now plastic they, they stack really beautifully you can make your own combos at home experiment that way i think that's a great thing to do it's a lot of fun make up your own signature blend excuse me signature blend at home i think it's a delicious wonderful idea all right i think that's it i think that's all we got we have any more questions there's still more but all right i'll give you one more Ah, orchard, old orchard. It's delicious. I'm trying to keep up with it tonight. So this beautiful cocktail is literally like the simplest thing ever. Grilled apples, Traeger simple syrup. We've got some lemon juice in here. We've got a hard cider in there. And uh, I may have topped it up with a little bit of this because it's my house. <laughs> I didn't think it was hard enough cider. That's it. That's all I got. All right, everybody. From everybody at Traeger. I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Be safe over the holiday season. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, remember, food brings people together. You can always taste that wood fire goodness and bring people to your table. I wish you all the very best this holiday season. Make sure you check out TraegerGrills.com for all that goodness. And from my home to yours, I wish you, you know, health, happiness, and all the goodness. And remember always, life is too short for bad barbecue. And don't even think about using that. I trademarked it. Have a great night, everybody. Be blessed. From my house to yours. Merry Christmas, everybody. See ya.